Congratulations! You are about to enter Bernina's world of creativity. A world of the very best, easy to use, and dependable sewing machines available. You will see how easy your machine is to operate, and you will learn about some of the exciting features that will give you endless hours of creative sewing. All sewing demonstrations will be done on the Artista Model 180. The Model 170 is basically the same, with fewer options and a different hook system. Have your instruction manual nearby to check the specifics of your machine. Your new machine comes with all the tools you'll need to get started. Inside the case you will find the accessories, the foot control, the instruction manual, the power cable, the warranty card, the presser foot lifter. The removable sewing table that comes with your machine can be stored right here on the case. To remove the case, hold both sides near the top and pull up. The accessories are stored in the case that fits on the machine. Here's what you'll find. Four bobbins, a selection of needles, a seam ripper, a small screwdriver, a second screwdriver for changing the needle, an oiler, and a brush. Also in the box, you'll find the seam guide, the height compensating plate, a separate vertical thread spool holder, and three different size spool discs for the various diameters of thread spools. You'll need to use the disc that's closest to the diameter of the spool. There are eight numbered presser feet included with your 180 machine, seven with the 170, plus the two additional presser feet you chose with the purchase of your machine. When set in place, the accessory box expands the sewing area. It opens easily to access the bobbin door, and it slides off to allow free arm sewing. To remove the case, first check to see that the hinged cover of the bobbin area is closed and then slide it off. The slide-on table that comes with your machine gives you an even larger sewing surface. This thread guide is placed here and the vertical spool holder is placed here. The thread guide helps the thread wind off easily. And here's an optional accessory you'll want this wonderful magnifier for a closer look at the needle and Bernina's precision stitching. Here's the feed dog position button. To lower them, push this button in. To raise them, push the button again to bring it flush with the machine. The feed dogs will come up when you take the first stitch. This is the foot control. It regulates the sewing speed. For your convenience, the foot control cord is wound on the cable tidy. Unwind the cord to the length that you need. Plug in the foot control and the power cable into the side of the machine. You can also raise or lower the needle by tapping the heel of the foot control once with your foot. The Bernina free hand system or presser foot lifter fits right here on the lower corner of the base plate. When you press this to the right with your knee, the presser foot is raised and the feed dogs are lowered. This really helps when you need to position fabric under the presser foot it's like having an extra hand. Lower the presser foot by releasing your knee pressure. The feed dogs will come up when you take the first stitch. The on-off switch is also on the side of the machine. Number one switches the machine on. Zero turns the machine off. The sewing light turns on and off with the power switch, or you can turn it on or off in the setup program. The presser foot pressure dial is on this side of the machine. It's adjusted here for the right amount of pressure on the presser foot for normal sewing. If you turn the dial to the narrow end of the stitch symbol, the pressure is reduced. You would lower the pressure to eliminate stretching when sewing loose knits and for easier feeding of heavy fabrics. If you turn the dial the other way, toward the wider stitch symbol, the pressure is increased. You need more pressure for lightweight and slippery fabrics and to prevent fabrics from puckering. Your machine comes with a new number 80 universal needle. This is good for medium weight woven fabrics and some knits. Check your manual for proper needle information. When you turn on the machine, the visual LCD screen lights up and the welcome screen appears. In a few seconds, the screen changes to the practical stitch screen. The machine is automatically set and ready to sew a straight stitch. The straight stitch field is highlighted. Here's what the screen tells you. Here is the presser foot indicator. The machine indicates the recommended foot for the stitch you select. You'll use presser foot number one for the straight stitch. This indicates the needle stop position, up, down. 
With a Bernina, the needle always stops immediately in the highest position when you release the foot control. With this function, you can choose to have the machine stop the needle in the up or down position. Why? Well, you may want to use the needle down position to hold fabric in place when you stop to adjust or reposition it. You can also tap the foot control for the needle to stop in the down position. To change the needle up down position, press this button. See, the screen symbol has changed direction. Next is your favorite function symbol. This comes programmed with pattern begin. Later, you'll learn how to program this with your favorite function. This area shows the stitch that has been selected. Here's the stitch width basic setting. When you select a stitch, it automatically sets a recommended stitch width. To choose another width, simply turn this knob. The change is indicated here, and the basic setting blinks here. This is the needle position bar. You can pick one of 11 different needle positions. All you do to change the needle position is simply press this button to move the needle to the left and this one to move it to the right. See, as you press the button, the dot moves in the direction you selected. Here's the stitch length. The length is automatically set when you select a stitch. To adjust the stitch length, turn this knob. This shows the new setting and the basic setting blinks here. Use these arrows to scroll through the stitch menus. This is only one of three ways to access the built-in stitches. The screen indicates three rows of stitches. As you scroll, the stitches roll through, one row at a time. To select a stitch, simply touch it on the screen. See, the stitch is highlighted and the stitch appears here. The machine tells you that the number five presser foot is recommended for this stitch. And see, the recommended length, width, and needle position are also shown and tensions are selected automatically. Along the bottom of the screen are some functions you may want to use. To learn more about a function or stitch, first press this Help button. Now, simply touch the symbol or stitch you want to know more about, and the information is displayed here. These buttons are the second way to access stitches. Press this button, and the Practical Stitch screen will come up and show you the practical stitches. Press this button for buttonholes. You can choose from nine different buttonholes, two eyelet styles, and a sew-on button stitch. And look, even though you're in one group of stitches, you can use these arrows to scroll to another group of stitches. Remember, this indicates that the practical stitch is selected. So, even if you're in another stitch menu, the stitch you last selected is displayed here, and that stitch will be the one sewn. This button selects the decorative stitches. These stitches are in categories divided into groups by type and size. Simply touch here to select a group and the stitches in that section are displayed. You can check your manual for illustrations of these stitches. This is the quilting and directional feed button. On the 170, only this quilting symbol appears. On the 180, these symbols also appear. Touch here and you access the group of quilting stitches. Press the button again, the screen changes. Touch this symbol to access the 16 direction sewing screen. Press the button again and touch the next symbol to access the four direction mending and sewing screen. You'll learn more about these programs later. Next is the alphabet button. You can select one of four different styles of lettering, uppercase block, uppercase open block, uppercase italics, and lowercase italics. And you can choose monograms in three sizes. Touch here to select a letter style and touch this symbol to change the lettering size. You can select two different sizes of letters. These buttons here are conveniently located above the needle for easy access. This is the quick reverse button. You'll use this at the beginning and end of a seam. You'll also use it to program a buttonhole length and to start and stop embroidery work. This is the pattern end button. When you use this button, the machine completes a single selected pattern. Pattern combinations are sewn with the pattern end function on the function bar. This is your favorite function button. You'll learn how to program this in the setup program. One of the great features about your new machine is that you can customize it for the way you sew. Press the setup button here. This is the setup screen. Watch how simple it is to set up your machine the way you want. Touch the function box and the function screen appears. 
Select your favorite function by touching it here from the top rows. The symbol darkens. Now press the F button. Touch the down arrow. Touch OK to confirm. Your favorite function is now assigned to the F button. Press the practical stitch button. Your favorite function is displayed on the screen. Whenever you want to use it, just press the F button. If you decide you want to return to the original functions, select Reset and OK. The original settings are in place. You also have the option to set up the machine to give you an audio signal for certain details. For example, when the upper thread breaks or when the bobbin thread is low. Here's what to do. Press the Setup button again. Now touch Beeper and touch the lower thread box. Touch On. You can ask for one, two, or three beeps. For now, select two. Touch OK. Now as you sew, each time the bobbin thread is low, the machine will beep two times. These audio signals can be turned on or off by touching these boxes here. Touch OK to confirm. You can also permanently adjust the sewing speed here. Use the arrows to reduce maximum sewing speed. To confirm your choice, select OK. And if you want to go back to the basic setting, simply touch Reset and OK. When you're sewing, the easiest way to change the motor speed is here on the function bar. You have four sewing speeds to choose from. What shows on this screen will be the maximum. And with the Setup button, you can alter the overall thread tension which means that if you sew with fine threads, you can set the tension tighter than when you sew with metallics or heavier threads. Here are the illustrations of thread tension. The upper tension is too loose. This is the optimum or basic upper tension. And here, the upper tension is too tight. These are the arrows to use to adjust the tension. Use the up arrow to increase or tighten the tension. Use the down arrow to decrease or loosen the tension. To confirm the alterations, touch OK. To return to the standard settings, touch Reset and then OK. Press Setup again. If you like, you can turn off the welcome screen here too. Touch Start Screen. Select Off and then OK. Now when you turn on the machine, the practical stitch screen will come up and the straight stitch will be selected and you're ready to sew. Let's say you like to sew by natural window light. Here, you can choose to turn the sewing light on or off. Press Setup again. Touch Sewing Light. Select your choice and confirm with OK. You can change this anytime. Just confirm with OK. Press Setup again. Touch Contrast. This controls the screen's intensity. Touch here to make it lighter. Touch here to darken the screen. Set the screen's brightness and confirm with OK. Now press Escape to return to the Practical Stitch menu. To remove all alterations you have made to the setup program, press Setup again. Touch Back to Basic Settings. The box darkens. When it's light again, the settings have been checked and are back to basic. To end setup, touch Escape. The machine returns to the last sewing screen you selected. The remaining buttons will be explained as we use them. To begin sewing, simply press this button. The screen shows three subheadings, Thread Tension, Tutorial, and Creative Consultant. Touch the Tutorial screen. This is the Subject screen. It has several different categories. Touch any category to find how-to information on how to use your machine. Touch Beginning to Sew and OK. Another screen appears. The first thing in beginning to sew is to wind the bobbin, so touch Winding Bobbin and OK. Each time you select a task, touch OK to confirm. The screen will tell you exactly what to do. And remember, use only authentic Bernina bobbins. Put the bobbin here on this spindle. Take this sticky label off the spool and place the spool on the thread pin. Here's where you'll choose the proper size spool disc to match the spool size. Follow the arrows on top of the machine. Take the thread through the guide here and around this post. See this grid on the bobbin? This grips the thread. The screen says to wind the thread around the bobbin a few times and push this lever against the bobbin. 
Press the foot control and hold onto the thread as it winds around the bobbin. Continue to fill the bobbin. When the bobbin is full, the motor will stop automatically. When you're done, take the bobbin off and cut the thread on this lever. Touch Escape. Touch Beginning to Sew again and touch Inserting the bobbin and OK. The screen shows you what to do. To insert the new bobbin, just open the front of the accessory box and open the bobbin cover. And remember, in order to remove the bobbin case, the needle needs to be in the highest position. Hold the latch of the bobbin case and pull towards you. Take the bobbin out and put it in the accessory box. Put the new bobbin in the case so the thread runs clockwise. Hold the tail out. Pull the thread to the left under the spring until it lies in the T-shaped slit at the end of the spring. Pull on the thread. The bobbin should turn clockwise. Hold the bobbin case by the latch. The opening in the case needs to be at the top. Insert the case. It clicks when it's in place. Take the bobbin thread over the cutter and pull down. If you cut the bobbin thread here, you won't have to bring it to the top before you begin to sew. When you're done, touch Escape. To thread the upper machine, touch Beginning to Sew and OK, and touch Upper Threading and OK. Raise the needle and press her foot. Put a spool of thread on this pin and secure with the proper size spool disc. Take the thread through this guide, into the upper thread tension, down through the take-up cover, up to the take-up lever here, and down through the thread guides. Either of these guides on the left or right of the needle bar can be used for single needle sewing. You'll have to thread both guides when you're working with a double needle. You'll learn more about double needle sewing in your instruction classes with your dealer. Now touch Escape. To make threading the needle quick and easy, your new Bernina has a built-in needle threader. Touch Automatic Threader, confirm with OK, and follow the directions. Lower the presser foot, tap the foot control to make sure the needle is in the highest position. Push the lever all the way down and hold it. Pull the thread to the left and lay it in the hook. Pull the thread to the right and pass the thread in front of the eye of the needle as it catches the hook. Slowly let go of the lever and a loop will be pulled through the eye. Pull the tail of the loop through and under the presser foot. Lower the presser foot. Pull the thread up to the thread cutter and cut it. The foot should be down before you cut the thread. The foot holds the thread. It's released when you begin to sew. But let's say you have a question about the type of needle to use with a certain fabric, like suit weight wool. Well, you own a smart machine. Your Bernina has the answer with the Creative Consultant, a built-in sewing helper. Here's how it works. Press this button and touch Creative Consultant. This is the fabric selection screen. Select your favorite fabric or determine which type is closest to what you're using. For this example, select suit weight wool under medium fabrics. When you've selected a fabric type, confirm with OK. The screen changes to sewing tasks. Select seaming. Here's what it tells you. The stitch is selected for seaming, and this is the presser foot to use, the needle type and number, the feed dog position, and the presser foot pressure. For the 180, tension is set automatically. On the 170, the tension settings are shown. You'll also find information on interfacing. Confirm with OK. At this point, you may need to change the needle or presser foot, and your smart machine even tells you how to do that. Press this button. Touch Tutorial. Touch Beginning to Sew. Select Changing Presser Foot and OK. See, here's all you do. Tap the heel of the foot control so the needle is in the highest position. Push this clamp up, release the foot, and clamp the new one in place. It's that simple. Touch Escape. To change the needle, select Changing the Needle. Raise the needle to the highest position. Use the screwdriver from the accessory box to loosen the needle clamp screw. Remove the needle. When you insert the new needle, make sure the flat side of the needle is to the back. Remember, flat to back. Push it up as far as it will go and tighten the screw. 
On the 180, the tension is automatically selected for best results for all stitches and techniques using regular sewing thread. On the 170, suggested tension settings will appear on the screen. If you need to make an adjustment on the 170, here's the tension dial. This is the normal setting for most sewing. If the tension needs to be decreased, turn this dial to a lower number. If you need to increase the tension, turn the dial to a higher number. On the 180, press this button. Touch Thread Tension, and the Thread Tension screen appears. Here's the perfect stitch formation. This is the tension scale, and the basic settings are marked here with a gray line. To adjust the tension for one particular stitch, simply touch the arrows up or down. Remember, this is a temporary setting and affects only one stitch at a time. The tension adjustments you make remain active until you change to another stitch or when you turn off the machine. This is different than permanent overall tension you may have adjusted in the setup program. The tension may vary when you use other types of thread, like embroidery thread, so you may need to adjust the tension for specific threads, needles, and fabrics. Confirm your selections with OK, and you're ready to go. To begin to sew, press the Practical Stitch button. The straight stitch should be selected. Here's what else the screen displays. Straight stitch, number one. Presser foot, number one. The automatic setting for stitch width and length. And the needle position, center. Also, check to see if the feed dogs are up. Now, look at the stitch plate. See the markings? These guides are helpful for sewing straight seams. In the front are metric measurements. This one to the right or left of the needle is for a 3 8 inch seam. This is for a 5 8 inch seam. And these horizontal marks are also for a 5 8 inch seam. These are useful for seaming, turning corners, and positioning buttonholes. And remember, you don't have to bring up the bobbin thread to the top to begin to sew. Use the free hand system to raise the presser foot and slide the fabric under. Line up the edge of the fabric on the 5 8 inch marks, here and here, and lower the presser foot. Sew a few stitches. This is the quick reverse button, which is handy for securing stitches quickly. Touch it and sew a few stitches in reverse. Release it and continue sewing. This is one way to secure the beginning and end of a seam. When you reach the end, touch the quick reverse button again for a few stitches. Raise the presser foot, take the fabric out, lower the presser foot, and cut the threads. Another way to secure a seam is to use the securing stitch. Select stitch number five, the securing stitch. This stitch is programmed to secure the stitching at the beginning and end of a seam. Here's what to do. Again, line up the fabric on the 5 8 inch mark. Begin to sew. The machine automatically sews four stitches forward, four stitches in reverse, and continues forward. When the fabric reaches this line in front, press the securing button, and the machine will automatically sew four stitches in reverse and forward and stop at the seam end. The next stitch is the triple straight stitch. Select stitch number six, and select needle stop down. This is a good stitch to use for seams with lots of stress, like pants or armholes. Cut a curve in two pieces of fabric. Begin sewing a 5 8 inch seam. When you stop sewing with the needle stop down function, the needle stops down in the fabric. Now you can adjust the fabric and go on sewing. When you're at the end, tap the heel of the foot control and the needle will come up. The triple straight stitch is also good for top stitching multiple layers of denim. Move the needle to the left. See how the triple straight stitch gives the top stitching a heavier and more professional look. Remember, you may have to change the needle for heavier fabrics. Check your creative consultant for correct needle sizes. If you use this same stitch and select a width, it becomes a triple zigzag. This is great for hemming heavier fabrics. And when you're working with heavier fabrics, you may have to use this, the height compensating tool. It's in the accessory box. The presser foot needs to be level to feed the fabric properly. If it's at an angle, the feed dogs can't grab the fabric. Position the tool like this for heavy fabrics to level the foot behind the needle. If you need to level the front, position it like this. 
and stitch until the presser foot is level again. Your new Bernina has a handy super stretch stitch. Select stitch number 11. Line up the fabric along this seam guide again. The super stretch stitch creates a flexible seam which is excellent for stretchy knits and fabrics like Lycra. If the seam looked like this, wavy and stretched out, you would have to adjust the presser foot pressure by turning the presser foot pressure knob here to the narrow part of the symbol. When you work with knits, always sew a sample first and check with your creative consultant for recommended stitches, needles and settings for sewing knits. Another useful stitch is the zigzag stitch. This versatile stitch can be used for seams on knits, over sewing edges and for decorative work like couching and applique. Most sewers use a close zigzag stitch to give applique a professional finished edge and it's so easy too. Select stitch number two, the zigzag stitch. The machine automatically selects the stitch width and length. And see this symbol? This is the special setting for the satin stitch length. Turn this knob to shorten the stitch until the indicator reaches this symbol. Turn this knob to set the stitch width to maximum. Use a piece of fabric with stabilizer underneath. Put the fabric under the presser foot and sew about one inch. Adjust the stitch length if the stitching is too close together or too far apart. The machine lets you adjust the length and width while you sew. Turn the knob to the left and see how the stitch tapers automatically. When you reach zero, turn the knob to the right and watch the stitch widen. You can move the needle position all the way to the left or right and adjust the width again and the stitch will taper from just one side. The satin stitch may look more raised if you loosen the upper thread tension. The easiest way to do this is to press this button and then touch thread tension. Touch the down arrow to loosen the upper thread tension. Touch OK to confirm. Return to the sewing screen or you can sew from this screen to check to see if you've adjusted the tension the correct amount. The simplest way to adjust the tension for the 170 is to take out the bobbin and thread the stitch finger. This adds a bit more tension to the bobbin thread and pulls the upper thread tighter. When you're done, remove the thread from the stitch finger and replace the bobbin. Bernina provides you with a variety of stitches designed to help with your every sewing need. This stitch is the very overlock stitch. It sews and finishes the edge at once. You'll be surprised how easy it is to sew knits using this stitch. Select stitch number three. On the screen, the machine tells you to use presser foot number 2A. See how this foot is designed? The stitch is formed over the pin. This allows the seam to lay flat and gives stretch to the stitch. Change the presser foot. Use a piece of knit fabric with a curve cut for a neckline. Fold the ribbing in half lengthwise. Place the ribbing on the right side of the fabric. Guide the cut edge of the fabric and ribbing under and along the pin here as you sew. See? A perfectly flexible seam and so simple to do. The next sample is the blind hem. This practical stitch will give you the look of a hand-sewn hem without all the work. You would use a wool or flannel fabric for this sample. First, finish one edge of the fabric with the zigzag stitch so the fabric won't fray. Then, select the basting stitch, number 21. Fold the fabric for a one and a half inch hem and baste one presser foot width from the edge. Select the blind hem stitch, number nine. The screen display tells you to use presser foot number five, and here is the preset width and length. This is the blind stitch foot. The bar guide is what makes sewing a hem on a Bernina foolproof. And isn't it easy to change feet? You just need one hand. Just clamp on. Now fold the fabric like this. The hem allowance is to the wrong side, and the finished edge is to the right. Line up the fold on this bar to guide the fabric and the finished edge under here. The stitch is formed over this bar. The machine will take several straight stitches and then the needle will jump over to take a bite out of the fold. 
The needle should just pierce the fabric. If the needle is not catching the fabric, adjust the stitch width. Guide the fabric evenly along the bar as you sew. When you're done, remove the basting. Look at this. You have a professional looking hem that was simple and easy to do. Bernina makes sewing so easy. Here's a simple way to sew narrow elastic. You don't need a fabric casing, just this stitch. Select stitch number 15. The screen display tells you to use presser foot number 1. Change the presser foot. Use a cotton fabric and mark a line on it for a guide to position the elastic. Center the elastic on the line. Leave about a 2 inch tail of elastic for a handle. Hold the elastic and slowly begin to sew. The needle needs to clear both sides of the elastic. See, the stitching becomes the casing. If the needle pierces the elastic, set the stitch width wider. Keep the elastic centered on the line and stretch the elastic as you sew. When you're done, even out the gathers. If this were a garment, you would now finish the side seams, securing the elastic in the seams. The 180 has a 9 millimeter stitch width, so you can use elastic that's up to 3 8 inches wide. Another easy way to sew elastic is to use the running stitch. This is great for lingerie. Select stitch number 4. The screen displays the preset stitch length and width. Since this stitch is also used for mending, the satin stitch is the preset length. Increase the stitch length to 1. You'll need a piece of trico about 9 inches long and a 6 inch piece of elastic. Divide the fabric and the elastic into 4 sections and mark. Put the elastic on the right side of the fabric, lining up the raw edge of the fabric with the edge of the elastic. Match the markings and pin. Put the fabric and elastic under the presser foot. Begin to sew along the left edge of the elastic like this. Stretch the elastic to take up any slack and to meet the fabric's edge. Be careful not to overstretch the elastic. It may roll. When you're done, trim the fabric. See how easy this is? You can learn more about this stitch and other edge finishes in your Bernina dealer's instruction classes. Here's a clever technique to gather fabric. This can be used to gather long lengths of fabric for curtains and ruffles. Select stitch number 12. The screen displays foot number 1, but for gathering, use foot number 3. This is the buttonhole foot. This foot will make gathering a breeze. Use a piece of cotton that measures about 4 inches by 9 inches. And you'll need some cord. You could use pearl crown rayon or top stitch thread. Cut the cord twice the length of the fabric. Mark a line on the wrong side of the fabric to guide the stitching. Raise the presser foot and place the fabric right side down and center the marked line under the center prong. Lower the presser foot and lower the needle into the fabric with the foot control. Now fold the cord in half. Hook it onto the center prong and pull under and behind. There are grooves in the bottom of this foot that will hold the cord. Now sew over the cord. See how the stitch goes over one side of the cord and then the other? To even out the gathering, stop sewing, lift the presser foot, adjust the gathers, and then continue. At the end, stop sewing and pull the fabric to release the cord. When you're done, pull the cord tails to gather the fabric and adjust the fullness. To secure the gathers, you can sew a straight stitch down the center and remove the cording. Gathering is this simple. Another feature you'll love on your new Bernina is the stitch quality of every buttonhole you sew. With Bernina's innovative buttonhole system, you can make buttonholes manually or memorize them in different ways, any way you like. All you have to do is position the fabric and press the foot control. Professional results time after time with very little effort. You have the option of nine different buttonhole styles, two eyelets, and a button sew-on stitch. Your manual illustrates all styles, and you'll learn about them in your instructional classes. Buttonholes are very easy and precise with Bernina, but you need to take a little time to prepare. Press the buttonhole button. When a buttonhole is selected, the screen tells you to use the number 3C buttonhole foot. On the 170, you'll use foot number 3A. This is foot number 3C. 
This foot has a sensor that communicates with the computer to set the length, and this slides to grip the fabric as you sew. You can use this foot for all buttonholes. To begin, select stitch number 54. Put on presser foot number 3C. The size of a buttonhole can be programmed several ways. Touch this symbol. Find the buttonhole size on the button card. Enter the length of the buttonhole with these numbers. If you enter the wrong number, just touch the delete button and begin again. You can use buttons as small as 4 millimeters to as large as 29 millimeters. Touch OK to confirm and return to the buttonhole menu. The screen tells you you're ready to sew a buttonhole. For horizontal buttonholes, line up the fold of the fabric on this horizontal 5 8 inch guideline here. Mark the position for each buttonhole. Begin to sew. For this sample, choose a fabric like flannel, linen, or wool. You'll also need stabilizer. For consistent and even stitches, all buttonholes need to be stabilized. This symbol always tells you what direction is being sewn. Everything is automatic. Isn't this exciting? Your machine knows the size of the buttonhole and will give you the exact size you need. The machine sews the length you programmed automatically. On the 180, the computer automatically adjusts the thread tension for you. For the 170, remove the bobbin and thread the stitch finger as you did for the raised satin stitch. This will give the stitch more definition. Touch buttonhole number 53. Another way to set the length of a buttonhole is to measure the diameter of the button on the screen. Touch this symbol on the function bar. This screen appears. Hold a button to the screen. Turn the stitch width knob to form a frame around the button like this. Confirm with OK. The size of the buttonhole is sewn two millimeters larger to accommodate the height of the button. A third way to set the buttonhole size is to use the fully automatic buttonhole foot number 3C. Touch the buttonhole you want. Mark the length of the buttonhole on the fabric. Stitch the first bead. When you reach the marked length, touch the quick reverse button. The length is programmed and the computer takes it from here. The buttonhole will finish automatically and the remaining buttonholes will be sewn the same length. A fourth way to sew a buttonhole is to count stitches. Use foot number three. It has grooves on the bottom of the foot that guide the stitching for manual buttonholes and keep the stitching evenly spaced and feeding smoothly. Select stitch number 51. On the function bar, touch the symbol with the number three presser foot. The left side of the buttonhole symbol is highlighted. These symbols to the left darken, meaning they are inactive. Mark the fabric with the length you need for your buttonholes. Begin sewing. When you reach the length you want, stop and touch the quick reverse button. Continue to sew. The machine will bar tack and continue to sew the right side. See, the right side of the symbol is highlighted. Watch as you reach the top of the first bead. Now touch the quick reverse button again. The machine will bar tack and continue to sew the right side. The buttonhole will finish automatically. Every buttonhole you sew will be exactly the same. This buttonhole is now programmed into the computer. Auto shows on the screen. Always do a sample first with the same stitch, fabric, needle, and thread from your project. There are other ways to sew buttonholes manually. Select buttonhole stitch number 52. In the function bar, touch manual. This six step screen appears for buttonhole number 51, 52, and 53. To the right is the buttonhole symbol. And here are the steps of the buttonhole. The arrows point to the starting position. Touch position one. The symbol darkens to show the direction being sewn. The first bead sews forward. Touch two. The machine sews a reverse straight stitch. Touch three. This sews the top bar tack. Touch four, the second bead is sewn forward. Touch five, the bottom bar tack is sewn. Touch six, the securing stitches are sewn along the buttonhole. Touch escape to return to the buttonhole menu. Now select buttonhole number 58. Touch manual. This is similar to the last buttonhole, but has only four steps and is used for buttonholes number 54 through 59. Touch position one. 
Just like the last buttonhole, the symbol darkens to show the direction being sewn. The first bead sews forward. Touch two, the keyhole is sewn. Touch three, and the second bead is sewn. Touch four, the machine will bar tack, sew a few securing stitches, and stop. Touch escape, and return to the buttonhole menu. The last buttonhole to sew is number 59, a straight stitch buttonhole. Here's the complete buttonhole. This buttonhole is designed for bound buttonholes and for welt pockets. You can program the length just like any other buttonhole, manually or let the computer do the work automatically. And one more thing. Buttonholes and decorative stitching can be a creative addition to any garment or craft project. You will learn a variety of creative options from your instructional classes. Sometimes on loosely woven fabric, a buttonhole will stretch out, even if it's been reinforced with stabilizer. To prevent this, you can sew a corded buttonhole. You'll use the same type of cord used to make gathers. Select buttonhole stitch number 51. Another feature about your new Bernina is precision stitching. By tapping the foot control, you can sew one stitch at a time without turning the hand wheel. So, tap the foot control to bring the needle down to the beginning of the buttonhole. Raise the presser foot and hook the cord over the center prong, just like you did for gathering. This is when the freehand system is really handy. Lower the presser foot and let go of the cord. Remember, the cord fits into the grooves on the bottom of the foot. Begin to sew. With cording, the buttonhole stitching is more raised and defined. See how the stitching fills in and gives a nice full look? Thread the tails through a large eye needle and bring to the back. Knot and secure with a few stitches. In addition to the buttonhole feature available on your Bernina, both the 180 and the 170 have built-in eyelet stitches. Eyelets can be used for cording on sweats and for ribbons and lace in heirloom sewing. Touch the satin stitch eyelet number 61. 62 is a straight stitch eyelet. The screen tells you to use foot number 1. Begin to sew. It's very simple to sew an eyelet. Just watch. The machine will automatically sew one eyelet and stop. Move the fabric and you're ready to do another one. The eyelet can be opened with an awl or a punch from this eyelet kit, which is an optional accessory. Eyelets of all types can be made with this kit. In this menu, you can also select to sew on a button. This stitch makes sewing on buttons child's play, and it's ideal for hooks, ribbons, and more. Select stitch number 60. Use foot number 18. See this foot? It's designed especially to sew on buttons. This shank in the middle adds height to the stitch. Use a fabric glue stick to hold the button in place. Take a quick walk from hole to hole to check the stitch width. Then let the machine do the work. See, the machine ties off every few stitches. When you're done, just trim the threads. The button is on to stay. Here's another clever technique. This is a simple way to create a hand-sewn quilting stitch. For this sample, you'll need top fabric, batting, backing fabric, 30-weight embroidery thread, and monofilament thread. Press the quilt button. This screen appears. Touch the quilt symbol. These are quilting stitches. Select stitch number 328. Rethread your machine with sulky monofilament on top and use cotton embroidery or regular thread in the bobbin. Begin to sew. The bobbin thread comes to the right side because the top thread is pulling it up. On the 180, the tension is set automatically. On the 170, adjust the top tension between 6 and 9. See how the stitch looks like it's hand-sewn? You can use this effect anywhere you want a hand-stitched look. If you like the hand-stitched look, blanket stitch applique is another technique you'll enjoy using. Here's a third way you can select stitches. Touch the 0 to 9 symbol on the function bar. Use this screen to select a stitch you want by number. Enter number 330 from the quilt program. If you enter the wrong number, simply touch delete. Enter the correct number and touch OK. The machine displays the quilt screen with stitch number 330 selected. You're ready to go. Watch how simple it is to applique this heart. 
put the fabric under the presser foot with the cut edge of the fabric here. Begin to sew. This is the open toe embroidery foot, number 20. See how you can see the stitching in the opening of the foot? Isn't this great? It looks like a hand-done blanket stitch. This stitch sews from left to right. And you can adjust the width up to a maximum of 9 millimeters on the 180 and up to 5.5 millimeters on the 170. Your Bernina is a sewing computer which gives you the option to mirror image stitches. Select one or both mirror image boxes from the function bar. This changes the sewing direction of the stitches. Look at this, an easy way to sew a beautiful heart with a hand-stitched look. You will learn some tips on preparing applique pieces in your instructional classes. Here's a quick solution to mending. The free arm on your Bernina makes mending a snap. For work on a sleeve or pant leg, slide off the sewing table or accessory box. Make sure the bobbin case door is closed. Press the practical stitch button. Select stitch number 23 and use foot number 3C. If the hole is large, back it with another piece of fabric. Place the fabric so the left edge of the tear is in the center of the foot. Begin to sew just above the top of the tear. Continue just past the bottom of the tear. Press the quick reverse button. The machine will remember this length. Now the machine will sew in the reverse and stop about two stitches past the beginning point. The machine will continue to sew forward and in reverse automatically with the same number of stitches and stop. This blends the stitching. If the tear is large, you may need several series to fill in and blend the stitching. The 180 has the option of using four direction sewing to decorate, applique, or mend. You don't have to turn the fabric while you're sewing. The machine does all the work. Slide on the sewing table or accessory box for large work or use the free arm to work on a sleeve or pant leg. Press the quilt and directional feed button. Choose the four-way directional feed box. There are eight different stitches you can use for mending or decorative stitching. Now, simply touch the stitch. Touch these arrows to change the direction being sewn. Place a two-inch square patch over the hole on the right side. You can start in any order you want. Just select a direction and sew to the next corner. Stop, select the next direction, and continue around the patch. You'll learn more about decorative stitches and this menu in your instructional classes. The 16 direction sewing on your Bernina 180 is one of the most innovative features to have on a sewing machine. With this feature, you can combine large designs and monograms, combine decorative and straight stitches, and sew directional satin stitching to create overall embroidered fabric. Plus, you will learn more uses for 16 direction stitching in your instructional classes and from educational materials available at your Bernina dealer. Here's how the 16 direction feed works. Press this button. Touch the 16 direction symbol on the screen. This screen is similar to the four direction screen, but here you can use the straight stitch or zigzag. Select the straight stitch. The compass has 16 different directions. Select position seven and sew about one inch. Select another position. You can sew randomly, creating abstract stitch designs. Use the memory to create symmetrical, balanced designs. It's very simple to program the memory on your new Bernina. That's next. Both the 180 and the 170 have an extremely innovative memory system. The memory of the 180 holds 1,000 stitches in up to 255 memory banks. Once the stitch patterns are stored, you can recall them anytime. Nothing is lost, even if you turn off the machine. To open the memory, simply press the memory button. The memory bar appears here. This is the symbol for the memory. It's here on the function bar. You'll use these two arrows to scroll through the memory. Here's how to create a satin stitch design with directional feed. Select position six on the compass and then touch the zigzag stitch. The foot symbol appears on the memory bar and has a dark arrow through it. Select position six 10 more times. That means there's a total of 11 foot symbols on the screen. Select position 10 10 times. 
This shows which direction is selected. Each foot represents a distance of 9 millimeters. You won't see all 21 foot symbols on the memory bar at one time, but you can easily check what you've selected by touching the check box here. At any time, you can display what's in the chosen memory by selecting this function. The cursor shows up here next to the last character or stitch entered. This is how to check for errors. You can move the cursor with these arrows. Let's say you only wanted 10 foot symbols, not 11. Move the cursor to the right on the last foot in position 6 and touch Escape. Touch Delete and the extra foot disappears. Select Check to review your changes. If everything is OK, touch Escape, then Pattern Begin and you're ready to sew. Isn't this great? And so simple to do. To create an even more intriguing design, select the double needle function and use a double needle and two different colors in your machine. This is just the beginning of what you can create using directional feed and the memory. You can find out more about directional feed designs from materials offered by your Bernina dealer. If you like what you've designed, touch Store. It's now in the long-term memory. Here's how to store stitches in the memory. Touch the memory box on the function bar to access the main memory storage and selection screen. This screen comes up and the box is darkened. This tells you there is something in the memory bank. Select a box that is not darkened and touch Escape to return to the sewing screen. Touch the 0 to 9 box. This is the number screen. Remember, this is a way to select stitches by number. Select a stitch. The stitch shows here. Confirm with OK. The stitch shows here in the memory bar. Each stitch you choose must be confirmed with OK. Now, delete the numbers by touching this box three times. Select stitch number 710. Confirm with OK. But now, move the cursor to the right of what you want to delete. Touch the delete box here on the function bar and the stitch is gone. Touch escape to get back to the stitch screen. If you would like to alter a stitch, just touch the edit box and the screen comes up with the stitch to be altered here. Move the cursor to the right of the stitch to be altered. Here, you can mirror image the stitch. You can extend the size, add securing stitches, adjust the balance, and add a subdivider. The subdivider will separate the memory into sections within the memory bank. This is especially good when you're working with lettering. Touch Edit again to return to the stitch screen and get ready to save what you've programmed. Touch Store and the stitch group is stored and will remain in the memory even if the machine is turned off. Next, program the alphabet and numbers. Press the alphabet button and select italic letters. Open an empty memory bank. Touch B and it appears on the memory bar. Continue selecting letters until you have Bernina showing on the memory bar. Touch the edit box to open the editing functions. Touch a subdivider in the edit box. It appears on the memory bar after the last A is entered. This tells the computer to stop after it sews Bernina, and this lets you reposition your work. Touch Edit to return to the sewing screen. Now program 180 or 170. Touch Store, and the programmed message is stored. You can check what you've programmed anytime. Just touch Check. Here's how to remove all of the stitches in the memory in one step. Select the memory box on the function bar. An overall view of all memory banks is displayed on the screen. If there are more than 15 memories occupied, use these arrows to scroll and select an individual memory. Select a memory bank that's occupied. Here's the programmed group on the memory bar. Now, if you want, you can delete this memory just by touching Delete. That memory is now empty. Touch Escape to return to the previous screen. To edit an existing group of stitches in a memory bank, select the bank you want, touch Escape to return to the sewing screen. Now you can add stitches or alter the saved group. Move the cursor to the right of where you want to insert a stitch, select the new stitch, and it's inserted to the left of the cursor. Remember to touch Store to save the changes. Touch this button to close the memory. 
Your new Bernina is so simple to use, you'll spend more time creating. And in today's exciting sewing market, you can choose from an abundance of new, wonderful, and delightful fabrics, specialty threads, and a variety of useful and handy accessories. And your Bernina is so precise, everything you do will look more professional. Another feature to sewing precision is your ability to change the stitch formation to suit any combination for fabric, thread, and needle, which means you may want to compress the stitch or stretch it out a bit. Touch B on the function bar. This is the balance function. This screen shows the possible formation of this stitch. This is a balance stitch. Here the stitch would be stretched out. Use this arrow to take out space between the stitch. Here, the stitch would be more compressed. Use this arrow to add more spaces between the stitches. Confirm adjustments with OK. When you're working with large motifs, the horizontal arrows here represent a sideways motion stitch. If the stitch becomes distorted as it moves sideways, use these arrows to adjust it. The horizontal balance is active only with sideways motion motifs and only available on the 180. There are a few more buttons to explain. This is the clear button. Select the practical stitch screen and select the zigzag stitch. Change the width, length, and needle position. Now, if you press the clear button, the stitch reverts to its basic settings. This is the smart button for short-term storage of a selected stitch you'll want to return to. Select a stitch and alter the width and length. Press the smart button. You have stored the stitch here and will return to it later. Select the practical stitch screen and select the zigzag stitch. Let's say you have sewn a while and you want to go back to the saved stitch. Press the smart button again. The stitch you stored is on the screen. You can use the smart button to toggle between stitches if you continue to press the smart button each time you leave the saved screen. All adjustments will be erased when you turn the machine off. Your machine has an altered temporary memory. It stores alterations to stitches, width, length, and needle position. You can use the memory function for as many stitches as you want. Each time the stitch is selected while the machine is on, the altered settings will appear. When the machine is turned off, or if you press clear, all alterations are gone. Next is the ecology button. If you've been sewing for a while, but have to step away and want to save all your settings, use this button. The machine is resting now. The power is cut by 50%, but all personal settings remain saved. The screen darkens, and as a safety feature, the foot control will not work. When you come back to sew, simply press the ecology button and you're ready to go. With Bernina's exclusive setup program, you can choose to set up your machine the way you want, according to the way you sew. Press the Setup button. Here's the main setup menu. Select the function box. Touch Personal Program from the upper rows. Touch the down arrow. The Personal Program symbol is now in the first space in the bottom row. This symbol is used to access your personal stitch screen once you've set it up. Here's how to arrange your personal program. Select the setup menu and select the stitch pattern box. Only one stitch, the straight stitch, appears when you open the program for the first time. Press the practical stitch button. Select your favorite stitch. The personal menu appears and it's ready to program. Take some time to think about what stitches you use most and the order you want them on the machine. Touch store, now you can continue to add your preferred stitches. You can add as many stitches as you'd like. Remember to touch Store to save these stitches on the Personal Program screen. Every time you turn on your machine, you can touch the Personal Program box on the function bar and have instant access to the stitches you use most often here on the screen, your Personal Program screen. Touch OK to leave the Personal Program and return to the main setup screen. Touch Escape to return to the sewing screen. These same stitches are still where they were before, so you can also select any stitch individually from the original screens. It's easy to make changes to your personal program. All you do to add stitches is press the Setup button, select the Stitch Pattern box, and repeat the stitch selection process. It's also easy to delete a stitch. 
press the Setup button. Touch the Stitch Pattern box and select the stitch you want to delete. The selection darkens. Press the Clear button and the stitch is gone from the screen. And with Bernina's exclusive setup program, you also have the option to change the basic settings for stitch length and width and needle position. If you do a lot of applique, you may want the zigzag stitch to automatically set up for a satin stitch. Here's how. Select the zigzag stitch. Press the Setup button. On the Setup menu, select the Width, Length, and Needle box. This screen appears. Turn these dials to alter the width and length. Adjust the needle position. Confirm with OK. The new settings are saved and will remain in the memory even if the machine is turned off. Your new Artista 180 and 170 have Bernina's revolutionary CPS system, Customized Pattern Selection. This means that you have the option to replace any of the pre-programmed stitches with your favorite practical and decorative stitches from Bernina's exclusive stitch library. What's great about this is you can customize your sewing machine to your individual type of sewing. It's your choice. Here's how it works. If you find that you don't use or don't like some of the stitches in the stitch package that came with your machine, you can have your dealer replace them. Or you can change them yourself with your personal computer and Bernina's CPS system software. It's so simple. Just connect your computer and your Artista 180 or 170. Bring up the software program. Send the stitches to the computer. Select a stitch category and choose a new stitch. Click and drag the new stitch and place over the stitch you want to replace. The new stitch is highlighted. Send the stitches back to the sewing machine. You can replace stitches, languages, and embroidery from Bernina's CPS system. It's this quick and easy. Bernina's exclusive CPS system lets you choose the stitches you want, and you can customize your stitch package for any project at any time, again and again. Your machine is never outdated. Another exciting accessory available is Bernina's innovative embroidery module. With the embroidery module, you have access to Bernina's exclusive designs, like Susie's Zoo, Precious Moments, Beatrix Potter, and an extensive special library of animals, fun figures, motifs, and seasonal designs, as well as built-in designs. These accessories come with the module. An extra-large hoop and template, a small hoop and template, an embroidery card, a free arm spacer to use with the mini hoop, and the number 9 presser foot. The free arm embroidery option is a Bernina exclusive. You can use the mini hoop to embroider small areas like a cuff or sleeve. The module is light and easy to install on both the 180 and the 170. This is the slot for the Artista designs and memory card. Just insert the special locking plug into this dedicated port on your machine. It slides easily onto the side and the back of the base plate and sets in place. Turn it on and you're ready to sew. To select embroidery, press this button. This is for accessing the embroidery module. This is for embroidery design cards. And this is to access the PC interface for the CPS system. Select Embroidery Module. A reminder message may come up to drop your feed dogs. Check to see that they are in the down position. Touch Escape to remove the message. Use these arrows to scroll through the designs. It's just like the sewing screen. Choose a design. Touch your design to select it. The hourglass shows on the screen. That means the machine is retrieving the design. You cannot access the screen while the hourglass is visible. The design builds on the screen, color by color. When the design is complete, the hoop will move to trace the area of the design. If you get an error message, the hoop is too small for the design you selected. The machine will not allow you to sew if you're using the wrong size hoop. Tensions are automatically adjusted for embroidery when the module is selected. Here's all the information the screen tells you. The required presser foot. This is for layout. This is for the menu of designs. This is the size of the design. The embroidery time. And the screen tells you how many colors are in the design. This is the layout screen. The machine shows you which hoop to use. Now touch Check. 
The machine traces the area of the design. You can increase or decrease the size of any design. You can mirror image the design and you can rotate the design. You also have the option of moving the design within the hoop. Touch Show. This will show you the entire design and indicate any alterations that you may have made. And when you resize a design, Bernina's exclusive stitch processor adjusts the design by adding or deleting stitches. Select OK to begin the design. The hourglass tells you that Bernina's exclusive built-in stitch processor is working. When the hourglass disappears, the machine is ready to sew. Visit your dealer to learn more about Bernina's design cards and design library. The Artista Customizer and Artista Designer are for PC lovers who want even more options and ways to expand the Artista's embroidery capabilities. A quality machine like this Bernina will give you years of creative sewing pleasure. Occasional cleaning will keep your machine running perfectly. Also, a yearly checkup by an authorized Bernina dealer is recommended. Here's how to clean your machine. Turn off the machine. Remove the presser foot and needle. Open the bobbin cover and drop the feed dogs. Press the stitch plate back here and lift it off. Lint usually collects here, so brush out this area. For the 180, remove the bobbin case. Clean it here with a soft brush. Never use anything sharp. Put a drop of oil here. Then replace the bobbin and case. It clicks when it's in place. For the 170, to clean the hook, remove the bobbin case. Press the release lever to the left. Pull down the locking frame like this. Clean in here with a soft brush. Never use anything sharp. Replace the hook. The hook race is to the left like this. You may have to turn the hand wheel to reposition. Close the black race cover and locking frame. It clicks when it's in place. Turn the hand wheel to make sure everything is in place. Then replace the bobbin and case. Please check your manual if you have any questions. And one more thing. There are many Bernina accessories and notions to expand your sewing knowledge and creativity. Each Bernina accessory is designed to make a certain job easier and give you more professional results. To expand your sewing options, try specialty threads, like embroidery threads and metallics, and try a variety of needles. Now stretch your imagination to create a project and professionally create what you imagine with your new Bernina and a few simple steps. There's also a wealth of educational materials available from your Bernina dealer to add to the inspiration and success of your creativity. The Artista Library, a special monthly publication, is written especially for your Artista 180 or 170. The library is full of information, creative projects, and exciting ideas on how to make the most of your new machine. The advanced guidebook and features give you numerous options to use your Bernina accessories for practical and creative pleasures. The machine mastery series and classic technique cards help inspire you with detailed sewing instructions. Bernina sewing clubs and instructional classes at your dealer's stores offer opportunities for continuing sewing education. Take advantage of all Bernina has to offer. With your new Bernina, the creative choice is at your...